name is Alicia Masari. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist and I work with a group called Imbalance. And we offer eight week courses and workshops for kids, teens, families, seniors. This is Sandra Salovich, founder of Destinos Enterprises, presenting Latin and Canadian destinations. We offer three different services, destination marketing, destination management, and general sales agent to travel companies, tourist boards, airlines, and land transportation. Homemade traditional Peruvian dessert, alfajores, basket of ham, beef, turkey, veggie gourmet sandwiches, hoggy waste catering, phone number 778-245-3007. It's Christmas. It's the most beautiful time of the year where you can receive, share, and give. And also it's time for where everything is forgiven. But what does Christmas really mean beyond the gifts? Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. Billions of people around the globe are celebrating this amazing occasion. Welcome to Dimira's Magazine's program Christmas Special Edition. Uh, Mount Pleasant is a volunteer-driven organization. We've been around in this neighborhood for 35 years, and our goal is pretty much to empower our neighbors uh, in order for them to improve their community, in order for them to build their capacity so they can run their own programs and their own activities in which everyone also feels welcome. I am the community developer at the Neighborhood House. Uh, what that means is that I get involved pretty much in all the programs of the Neighborhood House in different uh, roles. You know, some of them is mainly maybe just attending meetings and looking at projects that will be developed either with uh, adults, women, uh, some youth programs as well. I've been here for seven years, so there have been many uh, roles within community development work that I get involved. Well, when I, when I arrived, um, I, I went to Montreal just with the intention to learn English, not French. Um, but I didn't have enough funds to, to support myself while I was there. So I found myself a job and I felt very happy about it. And I started working. Um, and it was a restaurant, and it was a Peruvian restaurant. And the menu, most of the items were in Spanish. But a lot of the customers, they were French Canadians. So um, I would just go there and have a big smile and use my poor English and then um, people will ask me things in French which I didn't know what they meant, right? So, so I would say, uh, they look and I didn't know what that was. So it was very stressful for me but I learned many restaurant menu works in French very quickly because I had to if I wanted to keep my job. What believe you can give me that can or that can't? Um, it just gave me this um, value, a uh, family value being close together. I mean, Canada does give me that, but I think it's the fact that um, all this lifestyle that we had, you know, occupied social, but yet family, and made us, you know, give us the opportunity to live so close uh, to each other. I think that's why I felt here, um, because the fact that being here in Vancouver, yes, we do have a lot of family, but somehow, it, it's just very difficult to put everyone together at the same time. I guess most people over time learn this, but it is acceptance. Uh, being an immigrant here uh, requires you to be very unique all the time, and, and you have to accept that from other people as well. Um, not everyone is the same religion, culture, country. Um, ethnicity so definitely acceptance and being part of a community a multicultural community so working together that would be one thing <laughs> why do I consider magic my passion because it's I just I just loved it I just uh, like it's so, every day is something new for me every day uh, every show uh, everything that I learn uh, with the cards and with any other materials it's new and I, it's my passion it's uh, it's, it's, it's what I love to do and it makes me happy, it makes, I like to make people happy. Like I love to um, amaze people with something that they cannot explain, like how the cars change from hand to hand or 
uh, now they're all organized after you shuffle. Like it's, it's something that uh, is my passion. I just feel so uh, so happy when I do it. It's, it's I love it. So I got together with uh, three friends and we uh, arranged to have a Mother's Day um, celebration with Mexican dances and I teach them some dances. We didn't have dresses, we didn't have shoes, we didn't have anything, but we somehow improvised and we did a great show. It was like a family event. And there was a lady there that owned a, a Mexican restaurant here in Landley. And then she liked what I did. And then she asked me to organize um, a show for the Mexican independence and the restaurant. And then, yes, I did. So then because of that, some more people join in. So we create a group. And then since then, we never stop. <laughs> Oh, it was definitely the, the biggest challenge to come to a place where you're not really comfortable speaking and um, I did know a bit of English but it wasn't great. <laughs> I was very self-conscious about my accent and it took me a while to just be able to just go and just start speaking, like feel comfortable with it. Um, but I guess once I decided to do hairdressing, I was like, I really want to communicate with people and I want to be able to speak to them and understand. And I guess um, you kind of develop a different sort of language when you cut hair, but it's really important to know that. And because Vancouver is such a multicultural sort of um, city, you get a lot of accents. So eventually I was like, you know what, I'm just going to get over it and I'm just going to do it. And, it's good to have an accent because that way you never forget where you come from. As an immigrant being in this country, um, it's quite different. But uh, I have to admit that I always consider Italy one of the most passionate and uh, uh, classy countries. But uh, coming to Canada, I discovered that like you know there's a lot more than my own country as well. I mean, I come over here and uh, suddenly like you know settling in Toronto and getting to know all the people over there. Something as simple as stepping on the bus and everybody says hi to you or a good morning and stuff like that. That is something that amazingly, like even in my country, doesn't really happen. Terribly. Every day. But that doesn't really mean that I don't really love this country. I really love right here so much that when I go over there, I start missing right here. When I come over here, I start missing over there. So uh, it, if it wasn't just for the distance, I would probably live in both places. I feel proud of myself. I feel motivated to do more. I know where I come from and I know how far I went. And now the sky is limit. I, um, I don't put limitations on myself. I don't label myself as victim. When you do that, and this is my quote, there is no victory in being a victim. I created actually that because I kind of praised myself at that time being a victim. Oh, poor Ranka. If somebody tell me poor Ranka now, I would slap them so hard. But at that time, I didn't know any better. So when I recognize, now I recognize my clients and when they feel like victim, I say, you need to stop. Tell me what's bothering you, but there is solution. I always thought I don't have no solutions for my problem, which I did. But now I, for every problem, I think I have at least 10 solutions. And um, I was talking uh, with my son and he said, I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna be a realtor. I said, a realtor? <laughs> Where did you get the idea from? I don't know how to sell. He said, yes, you know how to sell. Vancouver is starting with a boom in real estate. He's an economist, my son and that's what you're gonna do. I said, no, I don't think so. He said, yes, you will. <laughs> and um, I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And he was uh, bang on the first of all, the market, uh, the real estate market in Vancouver had an immense boom in year 2000 when it started. And uh, real estate for me was finally, when you feel that you found your mission in life. Actually, one of my biggest passions is rights. I really like. And one day, 
I received a call from my sister and she asked me to write an article for teenagers uh, about, she asked me to talk about sexual behavior in teenagers. So I told her, oh yes, I, I will. And I remember that I started, and, but I had a lot to say, a lot to say. So I ended up with a book, no, only with an article. And that is uh, how I ended up with a book because I had a lot to say about sexual behavior in teenagers. Well, what you said is true. Um, obstacles always gonna be there, you know, are stones in the, in the road. Uh, my advice is be persistent. Uh, do not expect that things are going to be easy. Uh, be prepared for that. And uh, you, you prepare emotionally for that and keep your energy for that too. So when, when you take a decision to migrate to another country, you have to be prepared for that, ready for, for fight. So um, it's sometimes with yourself. If you feel down sometimes, you have to encourage yourself that you have a, a goal and fight for that goal. Uh, that's what I did, and well, I'm happy to to make it, made it right. So I, I become a pharmacist here, and uh, I'm happy to do my career. Welcome to the Right Nutrition with Alicia. Today we're going to cover drinks. What do we drink? What do drinks do for us? So today I'm going to talk about the number two mistake that all immigrants do when they move from the place where they, they, were, they lived and they were born and they grew to a new place. Also, not only as immigrants, but how all these drinks have been now taken to our countries. So we have to think back about what did our grandparents and great-grandparents drink? Okay, next question. How can I build a credit history if I am a newcomer? As I mentioned before, go to your bank. Open a bank account, either checking or savings, and ask them for a credit card. Many of them will say, I'm sorry, we cannot give you one because you don't have any record. But ask them for a security credit card, security deposit credit card. That means they put some of your money, they, they, they freeze that money to warranty the use of your credit card. Hola, welcome to the real field of traveling. This is Sandra Saljovic. Are you going on vacations? You have plans for that? You want to know how to do it? Today we're going to talk about how, when and where your vacation starts. You go on vacations. What was your main reason? Oh, I have time off at work, so I'm gonna go for a week. And so it turns out that I like to go to the beach and I do some snorkeling, or I like to do a trekking, or maybe I wanna go to a retreat. Before that, you have the real energy to go on vacation. Before that, you have some recommendations that I can put it together for you today. But start those recommendations working at home, preparing yourself in your own place, which is home, in your own destination, which is your city. Hi, I'm going to talk about the new Express Entry program that's coming into effect with Citizenship and Immigration Canada in January 2015. This program is going to combine the four economic classes, Federal Skilled Worker, Federal Trades, Canadian Experience Class, and the Provincial Nominee Program. Currently, the Federal Skilled Worker Program, you can apply only if you have an offer of employment from a Canadian employer, an arranged employment opinion, if you qualify under the categories that the government puts out every year, and currently there's 50 occupations with a cap, or if you've worked in Canada and you have a work permit for an employer and are, in, are qualified under the Federal Skilled Worker in National Occupation Code A, B, or O. ¿Qué tal amigos? Eh, nuevamente Yolanda Montoya con ustedes en la revista El Inmigrante en su sección de salud mental. El día de hoy eh, vamos a tratar un tema interesante para todos que es el de si el juego es un vicio o una adicción. 
Y bueno, pues podríamos decir que los juegos de azar pueden serlo, pero no necesariamente para todos. Es decir, con lo que, a lo que me refiero es que eh, no porque vayamos en alguna ocasión o esporádicamente a jugar en algún casino, juegos de azar o a apostar, quiere decir que somos adictos ya al juego. Esto no es así. La adicción se da como parte de una necesidad eh, inmensurable que el, la persona no puede eh, controlar. Eso es realmente una adicción, algo que la persona eh, difícilmente puede controlar por sí misma. With a crew of 230 members on board, including captain, officers, cadets, and other crew members. Cadets on board are students from the heroic Naval Military School in their fifth year to continue their studies in this school ship to get the degree of Guardia Marina. Cuauhtémoc's ship was built in Celaya, Bilbao, Spain, from 1981 to 1982. Its mission is to carry this message of good, will, and friendship around the globe. My name is Shelley Twist. I'm the Community Arts Coordinator for the City of Burnaby. I run the Community Arts Development Program that the City has run for 14 years. We like to encourage community arts projects that uh, bring the community together to celebrate art, um, to celebrate different issues that are important to the community. Uh, back in this, uh, this last spring, two women that live in this uh, Edmonds community of the Ernie Winch uh, Park Uh, came and approached the city of Burnaby asking if they can do an arts inclusion uh, project which was a mural at the spray park of Ernie Winch Park. Um, they came up with a proposal. The project uh, mission and statement was all about inclusion, um, having the community members work together. We took a look at it and approved it um, because it was uh, fantastic and, and was part of the city mandate. Chile es un país que hemos focused our development en ser un export oriented country uh, and a country where free market economy is so important. So uh, what we have done is basically we started in the early 90s signing uh, free trade agreements with the most important economies. Uh, we have as of today 25 free trade agreements uh, with over 60 countries that cover roughly 85% of the world GDP. So, In the end, what Chilean exporters did very early on was realizing that the Chilean market being a, not, not a very big market of 16, 17 million people, uh, the market has to be the world. Uh, and that has been uh, the main reason why Chile has been able to develop 
the a full export oriented market and we're in foods in particular uh, from exporting 3 billion in 2003 we're exporting roughly 16.5 billion last year uh, so i would say that's the main reason this focus on being an export oriented country and signing free trade agreements uh, and doing it very early on please we are open for business so any question just come to us and let's gather and do business together thank you Hi, my name is Michael Guerra. I'm from the Victor Guerra Annual Toy Drive. I'm his younger brother, uh, youngest brother of uh, four. Um, yeah, we do the toy drive every year in uh, memory of the man with the golden heart. Um, Victor uh, used to go everywhere uh, before his passing. Every year he used to go to the children's hospital and donate some toys. So um, after his passing, one of his friends shared a story that, you know, every year we've been doing this. So, um, you know, after his passing, we started that, hey, we got to keep his memory alive. So we started a toy drive. Uh, it's our eighth annual toy drive, and it's just growing year after year. Uh, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so far, uh, up to last year's seventh year toy drive, we had about uh, a little bit over 18,000 toys. So by the time uh, this year will uh, end, uh, this toy drive, I'm sure we're going to hit about 20,000 toys, um, as well as uh, donations as well. So, you know, we really thank the community, we thank Cooperative Insurance, we thank Van City Credit Union, as well as all the other people that, you know, have been with us throughout the years. Well, we've been involved in this for eight years now, Joe and I, through the cooperators. And uh, it's mostly, we got involved because we knew Victor very well. We worked with him previously, and um, we found out what he was doing. Uh, behind everyone's back at Christmas time, he was delivering toys on his own, and so we thought we should continue that. And in collaboration with his brothers and his family, we did that, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been eight years for Joe and I, and we, we love to shop for the toys, and <laughs> we have a lot of fun with it, and bringing them in here and seeing how many pile up. It's just great. It gets you in the Christmas spirit and in the spirit of Victor. Absolutely, and, and you know we can't replace Victor, but this is the way we can be closer to him at least one time in the year. So it's a Absolutely. great opportunity to get together and share and provide some some much needed toys to, to families out there who need some help this time of year. Yeah, it feels good. Uh, we're actually really happy to contribute to the Victor Guerra Toy Drive. Um, we feel that it's something that we, whatever we can do to help out kids in need and families in need, uh, you know, we're always happy to support that and. Uh, you know, it's, it's great to see the smile on the kid's face when they get have something to, to play with or when they open up a certain gift. So uh, we're really, really happy to contribute. And, uh, you know, our staff and, and uh, you know, our members are very happy to contribute toys. Well, we do a toy drive in our branch. Uh, we're from the Van City branch on Fraser and 47th. Uh, and essentially what we do is we have uh, boxes out in our lobby uh, and our staff and we have posters throughout the branch uh, and our staff also talk about it as well to members that are coming in and out of the branch. Uh, we also have a Santa, uh, Santa event where we hire a Santa Claus um, and uh, the Santa Claus uh, outside the branch and essentially what it is is we tell people that if you want a picture with Santa you donate a toy and those are the toys that we are uh, collecting for the Victor Guerra toy drive. Um, the response at the, our branch on Fraser and 47 is kind of really, uh, people look out for the event every year. Then people are always asking that when it's going to happen next because uh, the people enjoy it, the staff enjoy it. And uh, every year we do, uh, we buy like uh, about 2,000, 3,000 worth of toys. And then you know the, how we collect it is with, we have uh, staff asking members and we have people coming with a box of toys. And people see the box there and they approach us and uh, you know how we have staff enjoying it as well and uh, and then you know, to top it up we do an extra event towards it that bring a toy and take a picture with the Santa like Harj mentioned so it's a it's a really uh, successful event and everybody enjoys it staff and the members. I'm Chris Bayless exec director of Lower Mainland Christmas Bureau we're out here today at the eighth annual Victor Guerra toy drive it's a huge toy drive for our charity and a bunch of other charities. It's amazing how generous the Gira family and friends are. It's really nice to see the, uh, the entire community coming together and helping our Bureau and all the other good charities. And thank you very much. This year's toy drive has gone great. It's the eighth year we're doing this. Uh, over the last seven years, we've had over 18,000 toys. And by the looks of it, so far, we've gotten over 20,000 this year. That was our goal, which is fantastic. And we've had uh, toys this year going to BC Children's Hospital, the Lower Mainland Christmas Bureau, Rich and Christmas Fund, Care Center, which helps uh, families in Wally, as well as a few other charities like Canuck Place as well. So any charities that come to us that need toys, we're more than happy to help them. All in uh, Victor's memory, uh, the man with the golden heart. 
And this is all done for Victor because he used to go every year to Children's Hospital and donate toys. Every time they'd ask him, you know, who are you, what, where are you from, what's your name, he would never tell them who he was. And so when I heard this, when he passed away at the young age of 37, we had to do something in his memory and something we've been doing every year and uh, something we hope will keep growing every year with uh, the help of this great show and many others. Thank you so much. Christmas tradition can vary from country to country, but we all humans have something in common. We have hope, we have dreams, and we can try ourselves to be better human beings every day. Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas is time of reflection. Merry Christmas from Joy Immigrants Magazine program. Problemas de relaciones interpersonales, separación, divorcio, problemas con niños, adolescentes y adultos. Soy la doctora Yolanda Montoya, soy clinical counselor y mi teléfono es el 604-861-1071.